Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see. Oops. Hello, anybody out there in coloring land on a Sunday, the day before Martin Luther King Day. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Corey Anders here. She wants to say hello. Hello, people. <laughs> and waiting for the chat to come up. And hang on, I'm popping mine out. So that I can put it over here on the side. So that maybe I can see it. And moving that over. Okay, cool. Hello, Melinda. <laughs> How are you, my dear? I am. Hello, Kim. Nice to see you and welcome, welcome. And um, Kim, I am really enjoying your coloring group, uh, Ivy's coloring something. <laughs> I see it going by on my Facebook. Hello, Libby. Oh, no. Um, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that Jess is too sick for company, but I'm glad to have you here. Hello, Louise. Nice to see you. Lovely, lovely Louise. And um, I, I am absolutely fantastic, actually. Ivy's Coloring Garden, that's it. <laughs> I knew it had a good name. Um, what I want to know, Kim, is um, how did you get the name Ivy? And uh, is there a story that goes with that? And uh, because I noticed that it's also on your Instagram. So I'm assuming that it is something that people call you. You're happy to? Oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, guys, I can breathe. <laughs> now, that's not a guarantee that I won't actually cough, but it is very helpful that I can actually breathe today. So, and uh, you love the house. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's rather obvious. So does that mean that if I come to your house, there are ivy plants everywhere? <laughs> oh, there goes the cat. Seems to have, she just wanted to see what was going on. Breathing is always good. Exactly. The funny thing about it is, is you don't really realize that until you can't. <laughs> and there were a couple of days uh, in the last couple of weeks where I was actually getting pretty concerned that I couldn't breathe. Hello, Crystal. Nice to see you. So everybody, look what I did. Ooh. Uh, I don't even know. Hang on, I gotta fix the the color on this on this screen. It's just awful. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go to advanced and see if we can't uh, fix the color a little bit. Here. Oh, there we go. That's a much better. And um, this was just, you know, obviously it's my first attempt at. Uh, something like this, and so it is not uh, perfect, and of course, I did not draw it first. This is 100% freehand, and the cat actually put purple paint on it. I did not do that, uh, but uh, for a first effort, it's not not too bad. I uh, corrected, color corrected up here, and I lost my little lines, but I can put those back in, but I have been working. I got to say, I have been watching Shada Campbell, and um, if you don't know who Shada Campbell is, 
I have done a, a channel shout out for her uh, and linked it below. And she is an artist who, like me, simply declared herself an artist. <laughs> and um, she has a wildly successful um, arts, art studio practice. Um, not only, of course, is she very talented, but she is also a really good YouTuber. And she is somebody that I have really been studying the way she does things. Um, all the way from her um, staging of her Instagram posts to how she has her studio set up to all sorts of interesting things. Now, um, I have been seriously thinking about uh, doing a series on can you really become an artist at the age of 56 years old? Which is, of course, when I drew my first drawing. When I drew my very first thing, I had just turned 56 years old. So um, up to that point, I had never drawn a darn thing in my life. And, um, and the answer to that question, of course, remains to be seen. But exactly, Desert Nana, exactly. Of course you can. And, uh, but, you know, but you cannot do it with an eye toward um, uh, making a living at it, at least not right away. And, uh, but if you can, if you can achieve more today than you did yesterday, whether it be the quality of the art that you make, the quality of the product that you put out there, or something like that, then, you know, I think that there is, in fact, a real possibility that we have a lot of artists out there who could, in fact, uh, make a, a, if not a commercial go, at least indulge in their own retirement uh, in their art. And I think a really good example of that is Mary. Uh, Mary Adelier. Uh, Adelier, yeah, and um, that's not her actual real last name, but that's the name of her channel. Um, and uh, of course, Dee Dee Willingham has been an artist all her life, uh, you know, a practicing artist all her life. Uh, at, at different points in her life, she has employed that artistic ability in other fields, uh, but it's always been, you know, it's always been art. Uh, I think for Dee Dee. So, uh, but, you know, somebody like me, I, you know, worked in the legal profession. And uh, so, you know, there wasn't really a lot of art that I was doing <laughs> in that, except maybe wordsmithing. I, I, I was, I'm a good, very good wordsmith. And hello, Donna, nice to see you. And really happy to have you here. And by the way, hi, Nana, or Desert Nana. I have to be sure not to confuse you with Nanamo um, because there are lots of Nanas out there. Lucky you guys that had kids and all of that. And I still can't, I cannot get over the fact that I can breathe. I have a fairy godmother to thank for that. And, uh, and all I can tell you is bless her heart. Uh, anyway, um, Kat, would you please settle down? She is literally walking back and forth in front of me here, uh, going, well, Mom, are you going to get started or what? <laughs> what am I going to do? Anyway, um, so this was just me playing with some watercolor paint uh, on 300 GSM cold press uh, Visions, which I believe is a Strathmore uh, product. Uh, I like it. I like the paper. Um and yeah, so uh, I'm going to offer you guys up a bunch of different choices here today of stuff that you might like for me to do. I uh, did put in the title that I was going to be coloring in Botanicum. And, uh, and then, of course, I have my own books here because I have the things that I want to do, the things that I should do. And the things that I really should be doing, which is convincing you that you want to buy my books. Um, but you know what? 
uh, there are people out there who are coloring my heart and they are doing a bang up job on selling my books for me. Um, so I thought that I might uh, actually uh, just tell you real quickly for anybody who's new and I don't see anybody new, but if you watch after the fact, these are my three most recent books. These are the ones to get if you are new to my art. That is the best of C.L. Aldridge, 40 fan favorites. These are the 40 where I got it right. Uh, this is the uh, mandalas, which is 48 of the gorgeous mandalas that I have drawn. And even I am going to say they are gorgeous because they are. Um, and then there is my latest book, which is Dragons, Flowers, and Mandalas, Oh My. Um, Self-confidence is not something that I suffer from a lack of. <laughs> These are all the best of the work that I was capable of on the day that I drew it, and uh, I get better with every drawing that I make. So, all of that said, let's color in Botanicum, or we can do watercolor, whichever you would prefer. But I suspect that um, there are a lot of people who would like to uh, see me be brave and color in Botanicum. You know, we, we all, we buy these books, and then we treasure them. And we don't color in them because they're so pretty, we don't want to mess them up. Thank you, Kim, very much. I appreciate that a lot. And for those of you, hi, Elizabeth. Um, those of you just coming in or who may be watching later, I do have a little Easter egg coupon uh, code. And the coupon itself or the code itself is uh, control V, control V, there we go, is a gift for you, 25, in my Etsy shop. But that is, the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> hmm. see but I can still breathe. Uh, that is the link <coughs> to it. And uh, I say whatever you want to do. Okay, Elizabeth says Botanicum would be great. Kim likes Botanicum. Yeah, Botanicum is probably going to be the key. So we'll go ahead and do Botanicum. Uh, and so we buy these. We treasure them when we don't color in them. And we should. We should take our favorite medium and we should color in them. Now, my favorite medium, of course, is anything having to do with water. And anybody who has watched my channel for any length of time knows that I am Derwent Inktense all the way. I love it. I know that there are lots of people out there who thinks that Inktense is gimmicky uh, as far as, um, you know, as an art tool. Uh, and you can tell I've been hanging out with other artists, right? <coughs> who think that Inktense, excuse me, is gimmicky. I don't happen to think so. I happen to think they are just very, very cool. And so I did pick out an image and it's this one that I would like very much to do. You're working in Flora at the moment for similar reasons. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, we just, we, we should, we should stop looking at these coloring books and start coloring in them. And, uh, and so, yeah, exactly, exactly. Technically, technically you're not supposed to, but, but, uh, I am an artist. I will tell you that I would, with a guilt-free conscience, I would photocopy this page and I would practice on it. I would never give it to anybody else, but I would actually use it as a practice page for myself. Hello, Nanamo. Good to see you. And um, I do want to make sure that I'm not actually shouting at you guys, since I actually have a voice and I am... And not coughing every two seconds. Cat, you're you're trying my patience, honey. <laughs> she, she's like, she's like, but mom. <laughs> I 
I just want to walk back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Anyway, um, all right, so let me find my ink tent. Oh, boy. I put them all the way over there. <laughs> and yes, the ribbon is because the lid barely fits on this tin. And uh, I have picked them up off of them more than once. <laughs> so, uh, plus, I love the fact that I can then do this, and I've got the two of them right here. Um, And I am just so happy that you are all here today. Okay, so let's start with our, let's start by zooming down. Move my camera controls over. I'll tell you what. Okay, that is as close as I can get without, oh yay, she jumped off. Bless her little heart. She actually jumped off the desk. I love my cat, but man, I'll tell you what, she has just been a pill, an absolute pill today. I don't want to, <laughs> I mean, you can't really get mad at her, but on the other hand, it's like, holy heck, dear, subtle. Okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start with the deer because that would be, of course, a good place to start. Now, I think that the, um, that the, I'm trying to remember on a deer, I think it's the chest that's sort of white or can be white. Thank you, Nana. And thank you, uh, Melinda, earlier for doing that. <coughs> and hi, Sue Gaines. Nice to see you. And uh, so I'm just going to start with a light coat of the tan on the areas of uh, the, the, you know, the, along the back where it would be getting hit by the light. And I want to decide where I want to have the light source coming from. So in my world, in my world I'm going to, this is the outliner pencil. Uh, it's got no color. Yeah. So my sun is going to be somewhere over here. Okay. So our light is going this way. And, uh, so the backs of these guys, this side, and that'll uh, sort of let me know eventually where I need to start putting in shadows as well. So, but for right now, thank you. Thank you to whoever that was. Bless your heart. As of today, I am not going to be able to make my insurance payment. So I have reconciled myself to that, which means that I'll end up having to fight with them again, but that's okay. That is the life that I have chosen. Okay, and this is just a base coat. And I think they're white underneath the belly as well. So, and this is like, once again, this is just a base coat. Um, so how is everybody? And uh, what are you doing? And thumbs up from sunny Albuquerque. Ooh, is it sunny there? And gorgeous. I'll bet you the temperature's in what? The... 70s, maybe? Like 72? <laughs> and dry, perfect weather? 
Whereas here, it's it's today's not too bad. Today is really not too bad. And then the pawn is, of course, pretty much he's going to have white, but we're going to have to put those in with something. Because that's, see, she's being a pill. She is being a pill, everybody. <laughs> nope, 44. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That's terrible. That's actually colder than it is here. Wait a second. What is the weather here? Let me just look. Uh, let's see. If I hit that. It is 50. It is 52 degrees here. Yowza. Uh, Janet's scavenger hunt 2020. Having a lot of fun. Oh, what are you hunting for? I, you know, I came in to check in on what the items are. And, um, and then I forget. Because I get, I, you know, I get to watching either Ellen or uh, uh, Ellen Crimmy Trent or Shada or something like that. And I just sort of have forgotten what everybody else is doing. And then I missed Sammy coming back yesterday as well. So I feel like a crumb ball for that. I wish I'd have been there, but I will watch it back. I just saw the, um, the you know, the, the announcement thing. Okay, so we're going to put some of that, and then I want a little bit more of a, and I need my swatch book for this, because I want to put a little, kind of a, a more orangish red, or a more orangish brown, so you go to my ink tents, more like the willow, or the saddle brown, um, Maybe I think I'm gonna uh, I think I'm gonna go with a willow. I, I think that's more of a, a deer's coat. Uh, the 19, the willow, the willow, the willow, 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 willow. That would be this one. So I want to use that. For areas like here, and around the back, sweetheart, go, scooch, yes, this is not a place for you to lay, you can lay over here, but you can't lay, you can't lay on the work, no, you can't. And you don't need you don't need the coffee cups. There's just nothing over there for you. Really, really dark on this side of his head. <laughs> Her tail is just out of the shot. She's got, she's got, her tail is so funny. Uh, oh, no. People are checking in, but they're not staying. Okay. Um, all right, let's see how this is going to work out. Before I get all excited and do it badly, let's see if I'm even on the right track. Now, I don't really need to put anything under this page 
this is a thick enough paper to where it is not going to bleed through. Because remember that these Maria Troll books are, uh, or Trollet, or I know that nobody really knows how to say it. I wish she would come along and say. That's not bad. Yeah. Hello, Corey. Corey? <clears throat> Who is Corey? Wait. Donna. Da, 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 da. Oh, Coriander. Oh, got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that an English thing that you got to nickname everything? <laughs> it's like when people call me Chris, I'm like, uh, I don't know who that is. I, I never, the only person who ever called me that was my father, and he only did it to piss my mother off. <laughs> She's like, I named her Christine for a reason. <laughs> and it's the one rebellion that I never did, you know, I never did adopt that particular rebellion, although I adopted more than a few others. All right. So let's see here. Um, I need a, oops, that's the mustard. I don't want the mustard. Get the mustard out of your hand. I want this. There we go. For the little, I miss his little other feet. I like that. For right now, I like it. It could be a little darker. My mom was like that, hated shortened names, but used the Gaelic version of her name. Ah. And my sister calls my son Chucky to irk me. He's Charles. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And only our, our relatives can push those kind of buttons, you know? If somebody else does it, you, you okay, well, you know, they're just annoying, but when our relatives do it, when they should know better, they should know better. Even my grandmother never called me Chris. And she was, of course, you know, older. Uh, of course, my dad, my dad's name was Red. He, he called himself Red. I don't think he ever, ever introduced himself in his entire life except when he signed his military paperwork as Dean, which was what his name was. His legal name was Dean. But uh, but he was always red because, of course, he had a head full of auburn hair. And um, so... But my grandmother... My grandmother always, always, always called him Dean. Always. I think that's a mom thing. Uh, you see, I sort of screwed up my light thing, didn't I? Because I, that was supposed to have been light. Uh, it's okay. We'll get it right on this one. The light is coming from behind him. Her 
perfectly imperfect. That is a um, that is a uh, a um, phrase that Shada Campbell uses. It's perfectly imperfect. I love that phrase. Trying to watch chat and um, and do this at the same time, but uh, now remember when um, I don't know how many people remember um, uh, Catherine always coloring. Catherine, is that right? That's not right. Uh, Katrina, thank you. Katrine. Katrine. Mm. But I used to watch her do this in the Maria Troll books. And just, oh, those videos are all still there, guys, if you ever want to watch them. At least they were the last time I looked. I hope they are still. Hi, Nika. Hi, Joey. And hi, Gary. Wow, Gary, it's great to see you. And who's Bear? Uh, <laughs> okay, let's see, get that right. See, I shouldn't have mentioned Katrine. It made me sad. Uh, are you, would you just chill, cat? <laughs> just chill. Put your, yeah, you can put your little nose in the shot. You can put your little nose in the shot, but, but other than that, chill, baby. Huh? Because you're making me crazy with this constant moving around. Yeah. You're constantly moving. Which means I have to worry about whether or not you're trying to drink the coffee out of the hot coffee thing. Uh, yeah. No, uh, okay, yeah. No, that's a little too much encroaching. That's, yeah, you, you, that's far enough, right there. Right there. She is just, she's adorable. I mean, and ironically enough, she's actually a channel asset. <laughs> Does that mean I can write off her food now? <laughs> since since she's since she's so cute for you guys all the time. <laughs> can I write you off as a business asset, sweetheart? No? Oh, okay. She says only if you promise to keep feeding me. You may not get steak, but you'll always have a meal. Yep. You'll always have a meal, honey. Okay. A long way to go for three little deer. <clears throat> and they're not quite done. Of course, there needs to be some chocolate brown. Excuse me. That's the willow. That's the bark. 
Where is the dark chocolate? Actually, I'm going to try the mat. Oh, matter? Matter is to Let's try the red. No, the red oxide, because this already looks really red. It looks really red for you guys, but it's not. It's not nearly that that red of a uh, there we go. That's closer to the same color that I'm seeing right now. Hello, Mrs. Coffee. How are you, my dear? And I am well. Thank you for asking. Uh, how about you? And um, <clears throat> I know it's pretty cold up there, isn't it? <laughs> In North Dakota. I think about you guys as I'm watching that. You and Melinda up there in the, um, I mean, with the temperatures being what they are. Disrespectful cold. <laughs> Minnesota and North Dakota and all those places. It's like, holy heck. That is cold. All right, let's see if I can find that dark chocolate. That's the matter brown. I want to use that, but I think it's going to be too red. Minus three today with a chill, wind chill of minus 30. Holy cow. Unspoken bear. Okay, there we go. Hello, unspoken bear. <laughs> and uh, I don't know who Cassie. Oh, wait. Where is Cassie? Yes, Cassie. I do know who Cassie is. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you to whomever you are. Bless your soul. Um. Okay, so... Uh, we need to go one more shade darker in the areas of the deepest shadows, which would be here on the legs and probably here on the back of this leg and underneath this one and underneath here and there. And along is a little rump area here. Because I'm thinking about the light, you know, hitting him. And probably up there. And on this guy, it would be this front, or, you know, the front here would be the darkest. And so we have that. And then this part would be dark. And uh, let's see. Yeah. This part under here and under on this side. Just all of the areas where the light just wouldn't get to. Okay. I should probably zoom you down here so you can see these parts. Is that still in focus or did I take you fuzzy? <clears throat> Somebody, if you'll let me know. When I work this close for uh, any length of time, I lose my ability to tell whether or not I'm in focus. <clears throat> Oops. Uh, actually, you know what, honey? I need this. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I need that. Yeah. I know that that was a comfort to you, having that under you, but I'm afraid I need it. Yeah. I think that the fawn should have been a little bit lighter, but that's okay. That's okay. 
Eh. Yeah, I got the fawn a little too dark. But that's okay. It's perfectly imperfect. And it'll blend right in when I put all the rest of the stuff in. That was a bit of a leap into that darker shade. So it takes a bit of blending to get it to come out all right. 30 and sunny. Hello, Mickey Sunshine. How are you? And oh, welcome, welcome to all the people who are here today. And, um, for those of you who might be new, don't know me, my name is Christine. I am C.L. Aldridge Art. <clears throat> and I am coloring in Botanicum with my little helper, Coriander, and uh, using Derwent ink tents. And dabbing off quite often just because I've got a little too much too much pigment on there. But I love the way that the paper in um, in Maria Trolley's books uh, takes the water medium and um, yeah, that'll work. That, that 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 amount of shading will work. I'm gonna end up working on the heads a little bit more, but I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let these go now uh, and work on some flowers or the trees, probably. Maybe the trees in the background. I figure because you guys, I mean, you guys can do the close work. That, that's always fairly easy, but it's the, I'm trying to pick the harder things to show you how I would do them. Um, you know, like adding shading to creatures and stuff like that. I just, I love her art. It's beautiful. And, okay, so, now I can, now I can actually let that sort of, I mean, it will bleed, and it'll blend, but once you, you know, stop blending it for any length of time, it's kind of stuck there. So, that's, you do want to, um, you know, if you're going to work with ink tents, you got to, you got to be prepared to, to, to be in for it. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that, that those will those will actually work for right now. So let's move on to you bought the 150 Cezanne bud, budgies, budgies, budgie, budget pencils. I love budget pencils. I have this great set of deli pencils. Um, which are, I mean, they, they're marketed under a lot of different names. Um, but this is the, uh, the Delhi Star Joy brand. And, uh, and I, I usually have a link to this somewhere. Um, it requires two hands. Uh, there we go. But these are like polychromos. These are basically a polychromos knockoff. Aren't they pretty? <laughs> That's a beautiful pencil. It really is. Closed end. Silver writing. They don't have the colors written on them. But um, it's 
but they are absolutely gorgeous. They do have the numbers. <coughs> yep. And yeah, these are usually around 26, I think. Oh, 100 for um, $20 is a great price. Wow. Okay. All right. So now we need to choose some greens for our trees. And so I am going to go ahead. I am because these trees are in the background. So I'm going to choose uh, apple green, uh, the apple green which is the 1400. I am going to choose the fern green, which is the 1560. Um, now these are different kinds of greens, but um, I'm going to choose the beach green What I'm doing is I'm, I'm sort of mixing up the greens. There's the beach green. Um, I'm also going to choose a, an iron green, which is a really dark green. Um, and I think that's, that's going to be it. Because on a sunshiny day, these trees are going to be highlighted, right? So I'm choosing this, the apple green, which is the, And I'm really not being very um, scientific here about how I'm putting it down. I'm just going to do it on the side of the top of the tree that is um, closest to the sun up there. Assuming there's, I you know, kind of made a fun sun up there. Trying to decide, you know, what is what is which tree. Because you can add as much detail or as little detail as you want to these trees. Okay, so if I do that, then hang on, sweetheart. <laughs> God, you are just a big pain, aren't you? Okay, and they need to be lighter in the back and work their way down toward, oh, honey, no, no, you just cannot be there. I'm sorry, no. You'll have to go find someplace else to be. There you go. You can come around big, come around this side. Get out of the coffee. That's hot. She's going to put her tongue down on that hot plate. Would you please just get down? Thank you. <laughs> Before you give me a heart attack. 
How come other people can have cats and they're cute and mine is like annoying? Yeah, gently is, uh, yeah, um, aww. <laughs> That's okay. She only stayed off the desk for about 30 seconds and now she's back on it. So, it's, you just, you just, uh, I, I, I cannot be mean to her. But on the other hand, um, it, it has been, uh, I give her an inch and she takes a mile. And um, it got to the point earlier this week where I realized that I wasn't able to get anything done at all because I'm constantly having to deal with the cat, you know, in the middle of what it is that I'm trying to do. And so I finally had to ban her from the office. Um, but I decided that, you know, She's a channel asset. People seem to like her, so I would let her in. And now she's working my last nerve. Just like anything else, this is, uh, you know, th this working with ink tents is always, at least for me, it's always the the, pr the preparation that is the hard part, like painting a room, you know, the, the more you do, the, the better job you do in the prep work, the easier a room is to paint kind of thing. And it's like that with ink tents. <laughs> she, is, she is just bound and determined to sneak on top of this thing. She's like, so she won't even notice me. It's not like I'm that big. It's not like I'm that big. I'm not that big, really. I'm just a little cat. I'm just a little cat. Yeah. You were 25 pounds when I got you. Do you remember those days? She was just, she was enormous. Somebody had overfed her. And um, I actually, uh, I don't really know who it was that she belonged to. Um, they didn't really have, you know, they don't tell you that when you go to adopt cats. Hello, Anne. How are you, my dear? And welcome. And um, she does, and 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 I appreciate that unspoken bear. I do, uh, I I I do know that she loves me, and and I love her too. I uh, when I lost my my goober cat, uh, his name was Goober. <laughs> um, I lasted about twenty four hours. Um, before I had to go, uh, before I had to go and, and adopt a cat. Now there's people who say, well, that wasn't very respectful <coughs> of Goober's memory. Well, uh, <coughs> I think it was because, you know, Goober, my, my Goober cat meant a lot to me. He had a real name. But I don't remember what it was. I honestly don't remember what it was. I hadn't named him. Someone else did. But over the years, he just got to be Goober. And so that's, you know, that's what we called him, Goober. Um, and he also was a tortoiseshell tabby, just like this one. Uh, only this one is a, a, a bullseye tortoiseshell. And he was a tiger strike tortoiseshell. And um, when he passed away, I, uh, I took it pretty hard, uh, but I only lasted 24 hours before I needed some, it was like 
I came home and my house was dead. You know, my house was dead and I needed something alive in it other than just me. And, uh, and so I went down and of course, since I had, I had, uh, had not adopted the, the goober, um, was I inherited him with my house, but this was my first experience adopting a cat in Virginia. And of course they, uh, I adopted her through the PetSmart. Uh, it's the, the Humane Society does it. Through. Um, Louise, thank you for being here. And, uh, and, and, have a good week to you as well. Um, I always stay out cats. I, I always say, I always say out cats that pass on want us. Oh, our cats that pass on want us to adopt other cats. Yes, I agree. I absolutely agree with that, Anne. It was like Goober was saying to me, Mom, I don't want you to be alone. Would you get your butt down there and bring someone else home to love? <clears throat> because the house is dead without me and you in it together. And you need somebody. And she needed somebody. And she, she was so overweight. Oh, my goodness. So they, you know, the, the vet, because the, I went through the uh, humane site, of course, because they have a vet right there. And so the vet said, uh, you know, do you, you just have to give her food that is, you know, and don't feed her three times a day canned cat food, which is apparently what was going on with her past owner. And um, so, anyway. so anyway. So she is now down to a smelt like nine pounds, which is just about where she ought to be for the size that she is. Because she's not a little cat. She's not, you know, she's not built on a tiny frame. So this is a beach. And so I'm putting the beach in. And I'm going back to what I was actually saying before, which was uh, the, the way that your trees turn out is, is determined by how much, you know. And you can blend with ink tents any one of a number of ways. You don't have to put all the pigment down at once. You could start by uh, using the light color and then uh, add the darks in succeeding layers. I don't like to do that. I like to do it all at once. Beside which, I think that uh, Inktense has a magic factor and um and i i do i think ink tents are magic i have always maintained that they are and uh because you can't really plan for how the blend is or you can but it's gonna it's, it's, it's it, it, it may or may not turn out that way. Okay, now I'm going to go for that dark green, which is that iron green. And that is going to go in these areas down here, which are the very shadiest under layman. And oh, <laughs> thanks, Ann. Uh, yeah, I worked on those for a little while. 
I, they may, I, you know, they may need to be redone, but, uh, or tweaked a little. And then, oh, did everybody see the, uh, the, uh, the post on, uh, the finish of the, oh yeah, you did, never mind. The finish of the, um, Gypsy Moth. from last week, the magic factor. Yes, exactly, Joey, the magic factor. And yes, I am working in Botanicum. And uh, now, of course, I'm trying to find all the, the little uh, spots that So you all see what I'm doing here, right? I'm, you know, just sort of adding in all these little lights and darks. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to hit everyone or anything like that. Think of the way that a, a, a grove of trees looks on the hillside. And, you know, it is sort of modeled. You can't pick out exactly what shadow goes to what tree or uh, anything like that. Okay. And then, ooh, ooh, are you ready for it? The magic starts. The magic begins. All right, this has got to be my favorite part right here. Leaves up and start at the high point with pretty sunshine. What are you doing? Oh wait, hang on. We're gonna need we're gonna need a little bit of iron green. I'm gonna need a little bit of iron green right in these spots here. <laughs> no, quit being a perfectionist, Christine. Okay. No perfectionism allowed. And I'm going to go all quiet on you as I'm doing this, too. And I'm just dabbing. I'm not, you know, brushing along. I'm really just dabbing, trying to stay light to dark, uh, you know, so I don't contaminate my colors. Keep the light light at the top. And um, dab off, you know, the excess pigments. As you get, if, if you get some dark and you want to blend a, a light, uh, you know, dab off the dark first and then go and touch your light. And that way you'll avoid uh, the model, <coughs> excuse me, the modeled look. So... You'll get shadows and not models. Or shadows and not mud is really what I'm really what I mean. And I'm not looking at chat right this very second. So but I am fine. <laughs> Yes, and this, this you, here's the brush, example of a real animal hair brush. <laughs> yes, you're such a girl. You're so helpful. Oh, she's hiding behind the calendar now. 
I have a calendar that hangs out in front of me like a doomsday clock. <laughs> I have it attached to the arm of my camera boom. It's just a convenient place for it. Um, but it has my book sale count on it. <laughs> so I can see on a daily basis whether or not I'm, you know, whether or not I'm any good. Hey, you're in the way. Yeah, you're blocking my view of the screen. Okay. And I apologize that this is sort of a tedious part of it as you're short of going along. I'll try and hurry it up. See how beautiful that is? It's just amazing. Bye, Mrs. Coffee. Um, don't get your butt beat too bad. Wait, what? Who's beating on Mrs. Coffee? Let me at him. Let me at him and I'll go beat him up. <laughs> Or I'll join the crowd. No, I won't. Because I don't do that. <laughs> Tell me why they're beating you up. Did you do something bad? Uh... Okay. Okay. So it's just, I love the way that it works. And it's just, because you can move the color around and spread the shadow. And what the magic part really is that it's, the, the result is always so unexpected, you know? It's beautiful and completely unplanned. Uh, yeah, there's just water, just just water and these intense pencils, Donatinas. Um, and you, you know, you lay down a little pigment with the pencils, and then you, because it's ink, you know, it's it's ink pigment, dried ink pigment, and then you can uh, manipulate it and brush it around with the water brush. And once again, there are people who just say that, well, you know, it's just gimmicky. <laughs> Putting ink in pencils is just gimmicky. Why not just, you know, use watercolors and, or use, you know, ink, ink-based watercolors, which is really all these are. It's just ink-based watercolors. Um, the difference, of course, is, is that Watercolors are movable once they're dry, and uh, ink tense is not. Uh, but ink tents are without doubt my favorite medium uh, for just that reason. And of course, I am a water dog, I love all the water mediums, colors. Neo colors. Um, intense. Gouache. The Arteza real brush pens. <laughs> My watercolor markers, alcohol markers. Basically, I like everything but pencils. <laughs> and even the pencils, I don't mind. I, I don't hate, I don't dislike pencils. They're just not what I, they're, they're what I would reach for if the, you know, like there are certain books where you cannot use water and you certainly would never want to use markers 
on a two-sided uh, book unless you were willing to sacrifice the other page. Um, or you could do what Anne did, and I think that is a really um, uh, yeah, I love everything I hate, yet we are still friends. Exactly. That's the that's the basis of friendship right there. Um, uh, the um, uh, oh, what? Well, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Pencils. Oh, uh, yeah. You, uh, something about two. Oh. Anne had a great idea. She bought two copies of World of Flowers and she had them uh, spiral bound and she had one set of, of one side of the page and another set of the other side of the page uh, all spiral bound into one book using the two copies. And that way she could uh, color with markers every page in World of Flowers. And I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Gouache. Oh, gouache. Yes. Well, I don't have a tutorial yet, but I will. Um, gouache is basically opaque watercolor paint. Um, and yeah, it's just opaque watercolor paint. And I'm trying to think if we colored anything in gouache. I don't think so. I have colored stuff in gouache, uh, but it's been... Uh, they've been standalone things. You know, PDFs, that kind of thing. Nothing in a book, and I can't... I don't even remember what it is. I does this look like a grove of trees? Is this turning in, guys? I think it is. I apologize that it's taking a little longer than I had hoped for. Uh, and that's primarily because I'm doing each, you know, sort of individual uh, section of this. But I think you'd end up doing it this way if you were doing it in pencils as well and you'd spend a lot more time on the blending part of it yeah ink tents are just i love them i love them from the moment i tried the 12 set you know, I bought uh, I bought the twelve pack first, uh, and then it was all I could do to not buy the uh, the uh, well I I it happened during a really good month, <laughs> a really good sales month. I think I released a book that was doing really well, and I could afford the uh, seventy two colors. I think is how many is in this set. Oh, did I ever, I never zoomed back in, did I? I should zoom back in. So you could actually see what I'm doing. Or zoom back, I guess. That's it. Hey, there you go. Now you can actually see what I'm working on. So I'm just... And you can see that they just blend so beautifully. Uh, 
you just feather out that that edge and they look just like um you know just like the shadows would in a tree so what uh is everybody off tomorrow i know that we won't have any mail delivery uh, the banks are all closed. Uh, you know, any kind of uh, post office, federal, federal offices, state offices. Unless you live in a state that doesn't <coughs> honor Martin Luther King. Uh yeah, uh, Jill, the um, the 12 set isn't really, you know, it's not really too, uh, um, you know, too, it's not that cost, it doesn't cost that much. That's what I'm trying to say. Hello. The 12 set is fairly affordable and, and, and just like with watercolors, if you mix them uh, on a um, palette of some sort, if you use your water brush and take the color off and like in a glass dish uh, for a water palette, you can mix the colors directly as well. So that's a cool thing. So you could do, I guess what I'm saying is, is you can do an awful lot with a 12 set. You don't have to have 72 colors. But then I have always said that, that anytime you're trying a new medium, Always go for the small set to see if it's something that you're going to like. Because the last thing in the world you want to do is spend a whole lot of money on a set of, you know, something that you're not going to use or that you're going to end up giving away or it's just going to sit in the back of your closet or, you know, that you're dissatisfied with in some way. And then if you do decide you want to invest in it, learn to use it, you know, really Watch tutorials. There's a gajillion of them. Uh, you know, they're free. They're, uh, you know, it's always nice when the, you know, when you're able to recognize the, you know, the value of what you're getting from the folks. But it, um, you know, YouTube is just the most incredible place for learning. Uh you know, I can't tell you how valuable I have found these, you know, the watercolor colorists, everybody from Shada Campbell and uh, Ellen Crimmy Trent. And, uh, of course, you know, there's the Art Sherpa who does uh, acrylics. But, you know, a lot of the, the art principles across all the genres, you know, they're not just having to do with you know with the particular medium that that artist works in so if you've got an artist you know who's working in uh oils who's doing a tutorial on color theory uh the color theory itself is going to carry through to any medium that you happen to you know be looking at so you don't have to just limit yourself to only watching pencils or only watching uh, you know, watercolors, if that's what you, you've got, if that's your preferred medium. Are you enjoying uh, annoying me? Is that it? <laughs> By walking across the work again? Oh, here she comes around the other side. All right, yay, finally, trees. Finally, we have a whole grove of trees back there. E.B., <laughs> how are you, Connie? It's good to see you, my dear. And it must be, uh, well, let's see what, it's 325 here, so what's plus six is uh, nine, not, like coming on 930 there. Okay, and so now...
some trunks. How about some bark? We'll do some bark. Bark, bark, bark. We'll do some bark. And some... Now that's the outliner. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's bark, and I want oak. Bark and oak. So I'll add a little bit of the oak here. On the main shafts, or the main trunks. And then up for these, this is the darker spots. So I'm adding oak or bark, I think is what this one is. Sort of bringing it down along one side. And I could probably bring it down a little bit on the other side, too, just because I want to make these um, appear rounded. So if you darken up the two sides, then they're going to appear a little more rounded. And I will say that anything that I know or think I know about any of this stuff, I have literally learned from, uh, you know, watching other people, from watching, you know, as a kid watching Bob Ross, as a adult watching, you know, at, uh, at the Frugal Crafter or, uh, uh, you know, any any one of a number of people, um, any one of a number of people who explains coloring and shaping. Oh, hang on. Oh, sweetheart, that is just not appropriate. I'm sorry. Trash. She's trying to get up on something. <clears throat> and she dragged down a... Uh, she tipped over a bucket of water. Uh, fortunately, it's got a seal on it, so it did not spill all over the hallway. But... Uh, a bucket of water in your hallway, Christine, <laughs> especially with a seal on it. Um, it's one of those, uh, you know, the drinking water kind. And it's in the hallway because there just isn't any other place for it. Run, run. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, poor, poor Bob, poor, poor Bob. You will watch. I still, yeah, I still watch Bob Ross too. I cannot believe that they have resurrected those shows, but um, I'm certainly glad that they did. I watched them when they were original, you know, <clears throat> back in the day when you could uh, tune into PBS on a weekend and see Bob Ross. I loved him. With his happy little trees. And I still had no interest in painting at that time. Or in um, drawing. At least what I knew. I have always been attracted to art though. I mean, I've, it's like, I, uh, um, the other thing is, is, you know, carpentry shows. Like, um, like the New, Yan the New Yankee Workshop. And, uh. Um, this, <coughs> I used to love all of that. 
Oh, actually, I still do. Because I do watch. I still watch this old house. All right. These are awfully pretty. <laughs> Can I just say I'm actually impressing myself? <laughs> these are turning out really well. I'm sort of shocked. So definitely drag out your Maria Trolls and color in them. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of your Hannah Carlson's. Don't be, you know, your favorite artist. Don't be afraid of them. I mean, after all, I took Pan Pastels for the first time to a uh, Jane F. Hankins. I mean, you know. That was brave, let me tell you what. <laughs> uh, okay, so now, what color are the antlers? Are they, are they, uh, I know typically they're a, like a lighter shade, aren't they? So like a tan, like a really soft yellow. I think they're, I think they are. I think that they are a white. Let's do white. And then let's do tan. And we're going to diffuse it just a little. There's tan. Hopefully diffuse it a little bit with that white. I'm just using the very end of the pencil, trying to, you know, a little kind of sharp spot. And we'll just use the very tip of this and I just want it to be There. I may change that. But that'll work. Bye, Anne. Um, Anne, um, thank you so very, very much. And uh, uh, for being here and, of course, for all that you do. And... Um, Uh, the flex could probably be grass green, uh, but we'll get to them in a little bit. How about some flowers? Uh, so we've got some little wildflowers. How about some purples? Let's bring some purples in. You know I love my purples. So this is my favorite. This is the thistle. Uh, I will show you how I do this. You just come right off the tip of the pencil. You don't need very much color. And you don't have to color every square inch of a page. Sometimes it's enough just to hint at the color by, you know, maybe just painting the tips of something or just painting the base of something. 
this is something that I'm learning, you know, as I'm working in, um, you know, more with watercolors is uh, that is uh, a medium where you don't always, you know, sometimes you don't even color in the lines. If you've got an ink, you know, an ink drawing and you are coloring it, sometimes it's a style to not even color in the lines. So if I want this to be a black and white or a, a purple and white flower, I might just do the tip of the, you know, of the, the flower or the base of the flower and leave the rest of it a natural color. Now, of course, this paper is cream. Uh, so it's actually thistle and cream as opposed to thistle and white. But uh, but you get the point. <laughs> and so that's what I'm doing here. These are just little tiny areas. You don't have to be perfect. Each one doesn't have to be exactly the same shade of the thistle. Uh, you know, some can be a little you know, hint of pink down further. You're just sort of conveying the idea of color, particular ones. And okay. Oops. Sorry, there we go. So we've got that, and then there's just a couple of more, but maybe these will be a darker color purple. So, you know, those were thistle, so maybe be the uh, violet over. They don't, you know, maybe it's the, the same variety or the same kind of a. This is a different variety of it. And see how much stronger purple is as a color. It's amazing go back on that at all. Wow. Okay. And there's still plenty of and there I mean literally there was still more than plenty of pigment there. It's pretty amazing. And then of course to clean a water brush, you just squeeze the the brush and it puts a little bit of water out and then you can just clean your brush off and move on to your next color. If you are really worried about it, you can, of course, um, uh, use a little jar of water. Hi, Mama Megs. Welcome. And everybody, Mama Megs, she has a, a wonderful channel. Um, and hello, Cassie draws in color. Um, and hello, everybody <laughs> that I have not had a chance to talk to. I think you would probably love these two Donatinas. These are absolutely amazing. And I really, I love Inktense so very, very much. Um, and Trying to keep an eye on the time. I've got 3:37, so I know that I'm I'm good till four. Uh, let's see here. All right, so let's pick a nice cornflower blue because to me these sort of seem like cornflowers. Uh, they may not be. I know that for you guys uh, in England that actually have cornflowers, are those cornflowers? That's what they look like to me. 
So let me find a nice blue. And uh, see, I, I don't suppose that they could help me out by actually having a cornflower blue, could they? Uh, assume that the cornflower blue would be fairly close to the iris blue. So I'm going to go with that. Um, oh, thank you, Melinda. And um, uh, yeah, I can hard. I, I, I'm really excited. This will be my my uh, this is my my first month of being fully monetized on YouTube has gone by, and I've made a whopping <laughs> uh, fifty dollars on uh, uh, ads. And um, which, I mean, you know, it's like 50 bucks for just showing up every Sunday. And I think that that's wonderful. So it's, uh, it, I, you know, I, I look at some of the big YouTubers that are, are, are so, you know, that, what am I trying to say? I have no idea what I'm trying to say. Whatever it is, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Thank you for letting me be here. That is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> In that case, then let's just say that. Okay, so now this is the Iris Blue. And thank you for uh, sticking with me um, today through the through the show. Uh, Oh, I like this. I like this color. Okay, this is good. So, you know, if the space is big enough, I'll go ahead and uh, color in the space. But if it's a tiny, tiny space, then uh, it's, you know, just fine to take it right off the brush. Or if you've got, um, a, a, you know, just a tiny detail that you want to add or a place that you missed or something like that. Uh, it's just fine to take it right off the brush or right off the pencil with the brush is what I'm trying to say. Hello there. You notice that I'm making a habit out of coloring other people's work. It's not just my own work anymore. Um, and I've done that uh, primarily because uh, it seems to be... Um, the videos that uh, where I'm coloring other people's work seem to get watched more. So, all right. So there, I want to now. I, I need to pull this blue over. So how about we pull it into the tips of these? Because I'm doing what I'm doing here is um, is called color mapping, and I'm sort of balancing out the color. So if you use, you have to kind of think of your composition of when you're doing colors. Oh, Mickey, thank you, thank you very much, honey. That means a lot to me. Um, thank you for the super chat. And Mickey, if you would, if you would. Um, hang on, uh, C, L, O, whoops, eh, C, L, A, eh, I cannot talk and chew gum at the same time either, at gmail.com. If you would drop me a note there with your address, I will send you, I will send you, uh, I will send you a watercolor art card. Wherever I put my watercolor art cards, <laughs> they're out here. So, oh, there they are. Oh. This is the latest match that I've done. I've got a, a robin and a tree and a rabbit 
and flowers and more flowers and a cacti and a, one of those. So these are my thank you cards for Super Chats and, and uh, PayPal tip jar donations. So thank you. You'll drop me your address. I'll send you one. So have I got the blue it's still in? Oh, gosh. All right. Now, here is something I just screwed up. Got cocky and screwed up. Actually got blind and screwed up, really. So I uh, put ink tents down in the wrong spot. As long as you have not water activated it, you can, in fact, erase it. But once you water activate it, it is no longer erasable. You can't move it. You can't do anything like that. And for those who missed it, this was just one that I worked on earlier this week. This is very rough. It's my first attempt at one of the bigger ones. The cat sort of uh, contributed her mark to it. Uh, but, uh, but I was just playing with color and line and composition. And, you know, it's just basically practicing. You know, art is practicing. You're practicing all the time. Um, and, you know, of course I'm, I'm, uh, I've been watching a lot of, once again, watching a lot of tutorials. So back to color balancing. Um, so when you're color balancing, you want to, uh, think about where your, your colors are going. So if you use a blue on this side and you're working on a color palette, try and use that same blue somewhere over here uh, as well. And you want to either think in diagonals or triangles uh, or squares or, you know, whatever it is that works for you. Um, But you usually pick three points or at least two. In this particular case, because this is these are the far edges, I think I'm going to be okay with just two. But on the other hand, here is another one of those flowers. Those they are the same blues, aren't they? So now what I have to do is I have to decide: is that the only variety, or can I do what I did here? And I think maybe this could be a different variety. This perhaps could be a. I don't want to pull an orange in. Maybe I will make it the same. Maybe I will make it the same. Also a blue. Wait. Um, I don't know why it's hiding those messages. Show. Oh, got it. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, no, uh, Mama Mags, I started out saying you had a channel, didn't I? I? I was intending to say that. Oh, no, honey, you are fine. Uh, I, you know, No, I don't like blatant self-promotion, but I said, oh, for those of you who don't know, Mama Megs is in the house. She has a great channel. Uh, art, yes, Art Therapy with Mama Megs. She does wonderful things. <laughs> She does wonderful things on her channel. I don't get there often enough, but I really enjoy her channel a lot. So yes, absolutely. And if uh, Melinda wanted to link to it, or uh, I think at this point in time, everybody knows that if you go out to the three dots at the end of someone's name uh, and click there, it takes you, you know, and then click go to channel, it takes you to their channel. 
Hello, Rosemary. Nice to see you. And do you guys notice that I haven't, I mean, other than a couple of little brief hiccups, I haven't really coughed. I haven't had to pause. I haven't come up short of breath. Ah, that's so nice. <laughs> it is so very, very nice. It is nice to feel good. Okay, now, I need a darker blue for the inside of those flowers. Uh, let's see. There it is. So I'm thinking that I'll go with the deep blue, which is the 8550. Oh, wait, no. We're going to go with yellow. We're, no. Yes, because we want these to be pretty springtime. Yeah, let's go with yellow. What's the worst thing that can happen is we don't like it. We change it to something else. You can always change it to blue. But I can't change it from blue to yellow. Right? <laughs> Of course, with the yellow, I'm going to end up changing it to green. And what I want here is this is where I want the dark blue. So I'm going to use, I actually want to try the sea blue here. I'm going to use that as a cap. There we go. And for the magic part. Uh, um. <laughs> I'll go back. I got. I guess I'm gonna have to go back and read the. Um, yes. Yes, Mama Max. She does all kinds of cool stuff, though. I mean, not just she. She doesn't do just coloring. She does like like real crafting, like real cool crafting. And she's got you. She you are natural. <clears throat> I said it before. <coughs> you are an absolute natural at it. All right. So now I'm gonna do this one backward, only because see how how uh, much that blue took over, that darker blue, the sea blue. So I'm going to do this one backward so I can maintain the light. And then I want it to be darker at the top and still lighter. At the bottom. Um, I'm trying to think if anything interesting has happened on any of my, well, y'all know that they're trying to make, make Kappa tougher now, right? Um, I'm working in Botanicum, Cassie. Uh, yeah, thank you, Melinda. I should just 
Let you do your job and shut up. <laughs> it's botanic. This is the Dutch edition, uh, not the American edition, but this is the Dutch edition uh, by uh, Muse, M U S. And you can get this one. You can order it through Amazon, um, and but they're going to get it from the UK uh, because uh, that's where Muse is. I prefer the Dutch edition books uh, of most things <coughs> over the American. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> you know, there has to be at least one, right? I mean, it isn't that I don't like the American printing. It's just that the Dutch printer printing is better. <laughs> hello, Mousy Deb. You, hello, Corolla. Yes, now I I did. I jinxed myself. Absolutely. And, oh, boy, I'm almost out of time, too. Okay, so now let's at least see what these are going to look like. And in case you're wondering when I lift them, Boy, I really did jinx myself. Hmm. So now all of a sudden I got a tickle too. Grr. That's okay. It'll go away in just a second. I'm dabbing off. That's what I'm doing over here is dabbing off. I'll do a follow-up on this, just like I did on the uh, <coughs> gypsy, the gypsy moth. You know, I posted that. I never even went back and looked at saw if anybody liked it or not. I should go do that. I posted it in the um, in Jane's group. Okay. Oh, I am liking this. What do you guys think? This is. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Well, now they're trying to. You know some. I'm going to call him an idiot. Some idiot politician thinks it would be a good idea to <clears throat> define children as anybody under the age of 16 uh, instead of 13. And, you know, it's just, that would be, that would certainly, I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. It's not even, you know, not even. It hasn't, you know, there's, it's not a bill yet. It's not sponsored. It's not anything. It's just a discussion, but it's like, geez, please. Do these guys really not get it? You just cannot be a parent, put the world in your kid's pocket, and expect the world not to try and get in. Yeah, it's just...
And of course, you know, cop has got nothing to do with being <clears throat> child friendly. It's got to do with being directed at children. And I, you know, I'm certainly never making videos directed at kids. And, you know, but I also don't believe in going overboard and saying, you know, this video is, this video is not for children. And, you know, it's just like I apply a certain level of common sense. And I hope that the government will, too. Hope springs eternal. Okay. Well, it wasn't a matter of getting thrown out or not. It's established law. I mean, COPPA, the copper rule was, you know, it's from 1993. But um, they're they, they keep, or 1998, 93, 90, 93, I think, uh, came in with the internet, basically. They just revise it every 10 years or so. And so they're, you know, attempting to look at it again. Um, all right. So now we are at... at my ending time, which I just, it always just seems to come so fast. And, uh, and I hate that. <laughs> I really do. I mean, I don't hate it, hate it, but it just, I don't like it. <laughs> so let's see what we've got going on here. So this is the page that we're working on, and this is how far we got with, um, using uh, inktent. Exactly, you like you want to make content for everyone, but you know. And once again, this it's got nothing to do with being child friendly. Uh, it, you know, it, it's nothing to do with being child friendly. As a matter of fact, you know, it's are you making are you making a you know, material that children are likely to consume. And um, and the answer to in 99.99% of coloring channels is no. Uh, children aren't going to do that. Um, you are absolutely welcome, Michelle. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, and... Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm about. To, you know, because I'm about due for a food for thought <coughs> video again, which is basically where I just share my sort of worldview and and you know my opinions and how I deal with things and stuff like that, and and you know hopefully give people things to think about. Uh, like here's here's one. Uh, if something says. Take this with a full glass of water. What does that mean? <laughs> what size glass of water? A full glass, a full shot glass of water? <laughs> a full 24 ounce glass of water? A full eight ounce glass of water, which is probably the case. Uh, but what does that mean? <laughs> So, um, anyway, so just funny things like that, you know, uh, <laughs> and not on an empty stomach, basically. Well, that's not what that says. It says, take it with a full glass of water. <laughs> not necessarily not on an empty stomach. Uh, but yeah, I, I do get what you mean. In this particular case, uh, this particular, uh, it's decongestant, and you're supposed to uh, you're supposed to take it with a full glass of water uh, because it works with water to help break up the uh, mucus and stuff like that. So yuck, we don't really want to talk about that, right? Right. Uh, <coughs> speaking of which, 
Thank you, everybody, for being here. I will see you during the week. And until then, what are we all going to do? We're going to color something pretty. <laughs> see everybody. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, remember that you get on the PDF versions of books and sets. Hang on, let me grab it. On the PDF version of books and sets, you get 25% off if you use that link. So there it is again. And bye, everybody. Thank you, Connie, for being here. Mousy Deb, Cassie, Nika, Caroline, uh, Melinda, all the uh, Kim, all of my mods, all of my guests, everybody who came. And bye. <laughs>